Are any of the trees that are listed here in any way affected by any of the things that are currently happening? The ones that we're proposing, mm. not to my knowledge, because Thanks, they're all on private land. Thank you very much indeed. And can I just ask one more question? Sorry. The buildings that are proposed, the additional four in the central city, four, there was five, um, in the central city, have we, are we actually aware that the components that we're seeking to um, make heritage are still there? Um, so this is a similar issue to something you were discussing this morning. Um, mm. Again, it would be a matter of um, getting some feedback from Amanda from a, a technical expert point of view. Um, but just to clarify that point on the trees as well, just to um, let you know that there are trees to be proposed to be protected within the public realm as well as on private land. Okay, that's and good. Yep. Along the Avon River, there cool. are some trees that will be affected by um, flood design. Not many though. By the flood design rather than the heritage. Yep. Yep, fine. No, no problem. And, I, and the, so the question relates to the similar thing for the inside of Arthur Barnett's. Are the features that we're protecting actually physically still there? Uh, yes, so, so we've applied our methodology, our robust methodology and assessment to the new listings, um, and we're confident that they're intact and meet. They're the intact. So you've been inside them and checked that they're actually there. Right. Yes. Great. Thank you. All right. Ayani? Uh, um, just in terms of schedule of significant features and landscapes, um, just Victoria Square, what sort of heritage protection does that have? Okay, from a significant landscape uh, or feature, um, the Avon River is proposed, so, but from a heritage, historic heritage, there is a level of protection. Uh, so we don't, we're not proposing to list the square itself as a heritage item, but there are a number of features within the square which are protected and the whole of the square is identified as a setting for those items. So with our previous decision, have we, basically, do we still run the risk of Victoria Square then people arguing that we shouldn't worry about the setting because there's like redevelopment proposals? That's what I, because when I went to the talks at the WA, the thing that struck me was that it, it was a really inspired piece of, um, you know, uh, of of landscaping. And when you hear the story behind it, it, it does seem to me that it does merit some um, status rather than just being able to change the setting with, and you know, it, it's been proposed. So. Older than the art gallery, just by a few years. What a setting is. Almost art gallery, yeah. It probably just fits into that 30 year test. 1984? When was it really Sorry, what was the question? Just when was Victoria Square? Like, I mean, in terms of the heritage or having being a landscape or an area. So, when you hear the talk, when I heard the talk from the original designer, the thing that impressed what was impressed upon me was that it was really designed in a, in a wider context, and so the whole is actually really important. It, it all relates to each other, and it's quite hard just to take out parts of it because it actually undermines the whole holistic approach that was taken. In this design. is why it's listed as a setting and perhaps I could ask Amanda to describe or explain to you what it means if it's listed as a setting. Okay. Uh, so the settings we've identified are areas where there's potential for adverse effects on the listed items and within the square we've got the bridge, a telephone cabinet, the town hall, the floral clock, Bowker fountain uh, and the two statues. Uh, and as I said, the, because of the concentration of individually listed places in Victoria Square, we've identified the whole of that square as the setting. So that gives you a cohesive rec recognition of that cohesiveness of that place. Um, in terms of actually offering this Victoria Square protection in, it, in and of itself, 
that is something we could look at as part of our rolling time for, um, work, looking at the rolling program of research and assessment for listing. Yeah. You might have to make that a little bit more quickly. <laughs> <laughs> proposals to really Yeah, but uh, the, the thing is, is that we can't, if they haven't done the work, That's we right. can't actually no. put it in. But I take comfort from the fact that it is listed as a setting. Individual um, and objects. That individual and objects, here. which are all proposed for moving under the proposed plan that was, um, you know, that, that they're all protected, um, uh, well, listed, so that means that they've got to go through a process around, around that, which I'm sure... Um, Thing, uh, certain people didn't take into account, um, but it will that that will enable um, some protection in the meantime. But I, I agree with Yani. I think that um, I, I do that work as quickly as as you possibly can. I mean, I can't um, direct any further than that. We can't get you to. <laughs> but can we understand what that means? That's the question I was going to ask. Is okay. the setting? Does that mean uh, is protected through the setting. So in other words, the, uh, the two statues, uh, they're in a particular location, the, the uh, fountain's in a particular location, uh, so, so can those, they be moved? Those individual items are protected from relocation. <laughs> oh, so reloc relocation of a heritage item and a heritage setting, sorry, and a yeah, and a heritage setting is proposed as restricted discretionary. So activity. what is it at the moment? I mean, is Victoria Square a, a, a listed setting at the moment? No, the only um, protection is from additional buildings or earthworks or subdivision. Earthworks? Is the site of a listed um, oh. item. Um, so under the proposed rules for settings, there would be controls around if someone wanted to erect a new building on the site. Yeah, it's not so much that. I mean, it is about moving the mm. statues and, and yeah. redesigning it. Um, okay, but so there's no protection for Victoria Square at the moment. It's, there is for the expand. items within... The, the items and within. So you can't move an item within it without getting a consent, is that right? That's correct. Oh. Has that been... I mean, has that been notified to the proponents of the change? I mean, do, 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 does, does the CCDU know that they have to apply for consents to move things in Victoria Square that already have a listing? can't say for sure, but I'd be surprised if they weren't yeah. aware of it. Okay. Um, the Sarah representative has been involved in the um, collaborative advisory group meetings where we've been discussing these provisions. Yep. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's why they're consulting. So, so at the moment, um, anything that needs moving requires a, a consent, and that's a restricted... No, not at the moment. No, not, not at until the these rules take effect. No, but at, at, the at the moment, moment they the require moment. a consent. Yeah, that's what we just heard. Yeah. So they're yeah. currently listed, and that means they that it, it's it's what restricted discretionary is it? Yes. Right. Does that mean that it would normally, if it was a heritage item, would it normally be publicly notified? Um, I'm not sure whether it's got a non-notified activity status. I don't think it does, but it's something we could. Um, could you could you give us a note on that because it's not relevant to the decision we make today, no, really but it is very interesting. Yes, yeah. the, a number of us are interested. The non-notified regional's consent. So. And and you may want to look at the any of the orders in council and and the CCRP as to whether that makes a difference to any of the. Um, resource consent obligations because some of them have been alleviated, but I don't know that um, I don't know for heritage that it has been. Or the Avons of the precinct in this process? No. As a setting. Well, as anything. No. So I'm um, no, think of the hospital for example. We're notifying it. Notifying it as a setting. A designation has a specific meaning that for acquisition purposes yeah. and for doing works without a consent. This is not it's what's out of our being control discussed here. This. 
the new proposed stadium, um, that's got a designation yes. and we're putting in rules to support that in our district plan. Um, but but the Avon River Precinct never had a designation through the blueprint. A bit like the hospital, though, I think subsequently we've put a designation on the hospital and rules in place to enable things to happen. The Avon River and the sides of the Avon Council. That's OK. I mean, when, when the information comes no, back... But, uh, there's not a requirement to designate the Avon River Corridor because that w was already in either a, an Esplanade Reserve or an ac Access Reserve or whatever. It would have already been in public land. So there was no need to require it. Look, I mean, we're, 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 we're looking at um, legal technical ways, you know, uh, um, to, uh, to, to, to place additional um, hurdles in front of <laughs> things. I mean, Regarding Victoria Square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're in a situation where, um, where plans have been proposed without um, community engagement. The community engagement's now happened, so... Um, that may lead to significant changes in their approach, yeah. so hopefully it will. All right. So, is there anything else that people want to raise? Again, We're at 12.49. So, just really quickly, just so letting on, you know. on the trees, it was really depressing reading to hear how the contractors were actually um, responsible for a lot of the damage to the trees. Now, I know we're, we're listing trees on private land, and the public ones we're not. Have we thought about any controls around? No, just keeping one off. We've only listed the ones on. Sorry, so the question was about are we putting controls on public land trees? Yeah. Um, yes, so we are proposing rules around um, public realm trees and streets, parks, reserves. Um, it's more of a, a, a semi sort of blanket type approach, approach for to allow um, minor pruning, felling and the like. Um, but yeah, the, the individual listings is on the privately owned trees. Right. So do we require a consent for the contractors when they're doing works around these trees that are scheduled? Yes, we will. But in the central city, we can't uh, impose rules on the street trees. We can on no. other publicly owned land where there's in council ownership, but not in the streets. No. Yeah. But why not? Because they, when they did the recovery plan, they wrote out the um, special purpose road zone protection of trees within the central city. I mean, I think that's we, we can individually list, but we can't um, impose other rules that we're proposing for the parks and other open spaces. That's good, thanks. Okay, so um, who would like to move the central city natural and cultural heritage um, amendments? Paul, second of Vicky. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. The next one. The next uh, relates to... <laughs> They're coming? It's the... This relates... Is there another one underneath that, Elizabeth? I think that's all. Right, no, no that's, that's, it. that's for fine. the central yes. city. Okay, so. So we haven't inadvertently passed the Arthur Barnett building? No, we haven't. This is the central city chapter that we're talking about at the moment. Um, you have uh, made this is a just the significant solution. landscape overlay for yeah. the Avon River. Yeah, well, there's, yeah, there's nothing there. Yeah. It's, but these, these are only. Uh, these resolutions are only in relation to the amendments right. that were being There's, proposed by we're, staff. We're not dealing with anything else. No, at no, this no stage. I just appreciate that. Brigitte said before that there was an overall clause. There about yes, the there is ones. an overall clause. And I just don't want us to walk out of the meeting having inadvertently undone that overall clause. No, no. You, right. you, you, you won't be doing the overall clause no, today anyway. We're not going to get to the overall end. clause because it's 10 2. <laughs> so, <laughs> we've Sometimes got eight minutes to go. <laughs> I have another notified meeting at one o'clock, so I can't change the time of the meeting and we can't run over. Sorry. Okay, this, this particular resolution relates to an amendment that was recently done to the um, part of the Central City chapter related to cultural and natural heritage, uh, which basically removes um, uh, any rules 
and matters of discretion for uh, significant landscape overlay areas. Uh, part of the uh, central city chapter relating to open spaces relied on that rule being previously there and made uh, activities within that area restricted discretionary. Now that that has been removed uh, as a consequential amendment, we need to remove the uh, restricted, restricted discretionary activity from the open space section of the central city chapter because basically there is nothing to rely on and that would be only considered in the case of discretionary activity um, status. Right. Clear as mud? Yep, clear as mud, <laughs> absolutely. We're making it easier on this, we're making it harder. Through this amendment, we're giving ourselves more ability to assess. Uh, only if, if, if the activity becomes a discretionary activity. Right, so the Avon River would be, activities around it would be discretionary? An activity within the Avon River precinct, or uh, overlay, a significant landscape overlay, that becomes a discretionary activity for whatever other reason, will be assessed additionally for, uh, against the policies and uh, objectives of the significant landscape overlay, uh, but not in the case of restricted discretionary activities. So again, I'm, I'm just struggling to understand whether we're making it easier for things to happen along the Avon River or harder? It probably depends. If, if it's a restricted discretionary activity, you could call it easier um, it's because there are no rules in the um, cultural and heritage uh, chapter relating to significant landscape overlay for Avon. Um, however, if it is a discretionary activity for whatever other reason, an additional assessment matter would be uh, assessing that activity against the objectives and policies of the um, significant landscape overlay. Okay. All right. So, um, well, I'll move that. Do I have a seconder? Paul, I'll put that. All those in favour say aye. Those opposed say no. It's carried. Right. The next one. 12.55, Coastal Environment. An amended version of the Coastal Environment chapter is being placed in front of you now. And uh, in part, the amended version responds to one of the questions regarding uh, policy uh, 1913 yep. on the first page. Yep. Um, the question was whether we should be exempting the Port of Littleton. Um, we've done a little bit more research. Of course, at that meeting, um, Councillor Turner correctly uh, emphasised that the recovery plan for the port will override anything in the district plan, and indeed, yep. once that's in place, we will resurrect the on hold draft. Our specific purpose lives in port zone and make that consistent with the recovery plan yep and that'll come through at a separate time um, we've done a little bit more work on that and uh, referred to the minister's comments as I said it, uh, the other day that um, because this chapter was going through as a stage two chapter we have the benefit of those comments and one of the key comments is that uh, they suggest that the um, draft chapter fails to consider the role of infrastructure in the environment as directed by the New Zealand Coastal Policy Statement. And indeed the policy statement refers in policy six um, and nine and also the first policy one um, asking for recognition of infrastructure. Um, policy nine in particular refers to the port. So um, to actually address those concerns which I think are valid, um, I'm suggesting that um, instead of um, just accepting the port, we actually have broadened the exception to include critical infrastructure. Now, critical infrastructure is already defined in, in the Stage 1 definitions as including Christchurch Airport, Littleton Port, gas and storage distribution facilities, yeah. electricity stations, um, importantly for our point of view, um, strategic roads and rail networks and the likes. Um, so I think that this would be uh, a better fit in terms of recognition of that high order document, uh, such as the New Zealand Coastal Policy Statement. Otherwise, I think we're open to submissions um, yep. from the ministers. No, I think that's good. Are you happy to move that, Andrew? Um, and David would love to second that. No, he doesn't want to second it. 
Phil would like to second it. Sorry, I just thought I'd share the love. I'll put that my. Uh, which part of the, the chapter? Page seven, there? at the bottom of the page. Yes. So that's a new edition? Uh, it's just relocated, Councillor Johansson. Um, and so we relocated that reference, and I've actually included the shed. Uh, that was on map. page five? Yes, so it's just a renumbering. We just reformatted the, the uh, chapter to be consistent with other chapters. And does it reflect the stage one of hearings? Uh, it reflects what um, you've already had presented to you as part of the second part of the residential chapter that my colleague Sarah Oliver covered off with you and about the workshopping. So that's consistent with what was agreed there. But, but all we're voting on here is the amendment with the exception of critical infrastructure to replace um, Port of Littleton. Yeah. The other part of the amendment to deleting that um, overarching policy that we're proposing to include in the strategic direction oh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. can't do that any longer because as we know the decisions released by the independent hearings panel on the strategic directions chapter has taken out all policies so yeah. we're just going to rely on, on an existing objective for that okay so so we don't uh, we don't need the amend policy 3.6.4.6 yes we do you do effectively well we're deleting it. So oh, but delete, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, yeah. yep, 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 okay, so those are the two things that yep. we're doing. The so other I'll minor amendments, of course, are, are caught by sort of wrap-up um, yep. provisions of the, of the overall resolution. Okay, I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. So I think that's as far as we can go. I'm sorry. I know. There's well, only two more. <laughs> well, I have got a scheduled, <laughs> notified meeting. How quickly are they? Let's see. Um, well, it's really just Cranford Basin, and one definition, and then just passing the overall resolutions. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. But the the overarching resolution. I I I I mean. The, the, the overarching resolution is to confirm all of the chapters. So, subject to these additional Yes, but I don't, I don't want to do that ah, right. today. Okay. So on Wednesday, what we'll do is I'll get you to, to put all of the um, chapters that we're signing off and the elements within them just in order that we're going to do them on Wednesday morning. So, because I mean, we can, we can. I want to do them chapter by chapter because Yanni's raised a point, is, which is that there is no opportunity to vote on an amendment that a councillor wants to move unless we do it chapter by chapter. Mm. So we've get, got all the technical stuff out of the way, and that can then focus everyone's mind mm. on the individual chapters, and we'll sign them off. Now, if there's no problem with a chapter. It will take a minute, but if it, if there is an issue, then we can debate it, and we'll and I'll I'll ask the meeting to come prepared on Wednesday morning with all of the detail of the um, that they want to that they want to focus on and get people to think about the amendments ahead of time that they want to put in front of the meeting. So I mean, it it, it's, it, it means that you're three days later on in terms That's fine. of the That's notification. Fine. I, I had thought that we had understood all of the issues to date and so we have amended the chapters, but that's perfectly fine. No, no, no. I that, mean... That we the, take the, three the, days. The problem is that, you know... Um, that's... The problem is, is that we are under an enormous mm. pressure of time. Um, you know, I mean, you've got the technical expertise. I certainly don't. And, um, you know, if councillors feel at the end of this process that they haven't had their issue put on the table for a vote, yep. then we've got no chance to resolve that when it comes back from the Minister. So I'd rather take the three that, days and let people fine. feel that they've had a, a fair suck of the salve, as one would say, <laughs> in colloquial terms. <laughs> so let's see if we can get through Cranford Basin. This is the ODP for Cranford Basin Residential Rezoning. This is all su subject to the... Um, is this subject, subject to So do you want to do this now or on Wednesday? Well, well let's see if we can... Costs of infrastructure. I do have that. I just... Right. I'm just worried that we've got a meeting if we don't open in four minutes. 
the basically maps. No, no, it's 10 minutes. 10, 10, 10 by 10 parts. Right, okay. Yeah. But, uh, but if, that's gonna, if there's lots of questions, then I won't do it. So we'll do this at the beginning of the meeting. If people could... On Wednesday, next Wednesday. Um, next Wednesday. Um, I, what I could do is I could adjourn the meeting, and we'll see if... I mean, I'll adjourn it, but we'll see if we can get an earlier time. But um, Wednesday's fine, but could we perhaps add on an extra half hour just so that we can finish well, things on Wednesday? Yeah, that, that, this if is, that's necessary. This is why I'm being problem... This is why... Um, I have a transition advisory board on that day. Ah, right. Um, Next Wednesday is the is the sixth of May. Uh, yes, yes, I can. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, I can. I, I I'll make that from eight o'clock to um, nine thirty. Great, thank All you. Right. Wednesday 8 till 9 is currently in your diary and we'll extend it till 9.30. Thank you. Right, okay. So if you could notify our officers of that change in time, that's great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. The meeting's adjourned.